Top 10, top I got a top 10, 10. Top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10 Gotta learn from the wise women and men Need motivation? Watch the thin with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something greater inside you as well. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. So get ready to model success, use every experience to learn, and don't be too hard on yourself with Timothy Chalamet and my take on his top 10 rules of success to give you the confidence, motivation, and belief that you need. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, model success. Chris Nolan is somebody that you may have had not the big starring role in Interstellar, right. but you're the son of Matthew McConaughey's character, mm -hmm. and you don't seem to be afraid to take parts that uh, saying, I, even if I'm in it for three scenes, it's worth me having this experience. Oh man, that's why I did a part like I did in Hostiles, which isn't like a huge part or anything, but I wanted to watch how Christian Bale works on a set for a month and a half, because he's an incredible actor, and sure enough, there are things I can, you know... Steal! Not necessarily steal, but just even the you know the idea that it's a marathon and not a sprint, mm -hmm. and the way he shows up on set every day and he's ready to go and he doesn't reach for anything in a scene, which is you know the privilege of getting to be leads in a movie for 20, 30 years. But as a young actor, you know you're reaching all the time, and so to watch him go to work, it's that was an insane experience, and it's something I'm totally happy I did, even though the role's not huge. But I just wanted to be around those veterans and those greats. Rule number two: use every experience to learn. People who would be watching this interview, mm -hmm. some of them are aspiring actors and yeah. you're the idol, you know, so maybe a few words for them. You know, the world is your oyster and everything's a learning experience. I think I was talking about that with a, my good, like a good actor friend the other day, uh, how like even to audition is an opportunity to get in front of people and practice your craft or at the very least, even if you're in a bad headspace or something, an opportunity to learn how to act in a, in a bad headspace or to be in, in pressure cooker environment. So, um, that experience is the greatest teacher, I guess. Rule number three, adapt. I think it's adaptability. That's like the strongest suit you can have as an actor. The experience working with Luca Guadagnino is different than the experience working with Greta Gerwig. It was different from the experience working with Christopher Nolan. And as an actor, particularly if you're not the lead of the project, you try to make yourself as uh, clay-like, as malleable as possible, a blip in the radar, uh, a wallflower, uh, somebody who comes prepared and is ready to go and maybe you have an idea or a trick up your sleeve, something you want to try out, but ultimately your responsibility is to the character, to the story, to that sequence of that day, and just trying to do the best job as possible. Rule number four, don't be too hard on yourself. Are you very judgmental on the work as you're doing it? I'm not as I'm doing it. There's a great quote by a nun who turned into an artist in Northern California, and I'm forgetting her name, but at the Andy Warhol Museum in, Museum in Pittsburgh, it's a big quote on the wall that says creating and analyzing are separate processes. Mm. And I like that a lot. So it doesn't mean analyzation isn't, a, isn't beneficial to the process in some, at some point when you're working, when you're creating, you really you just have to be focused on that. And that's something that drum, that LaGuardia and the School of Performing Arts and that high school experience really brought me because especially when you're performing in front of other kids your age and it's such a formative, weird, awkward time. If you can get up there and fail enough times consistently and just be bad and just be like really bad, <laughs> then it just releases you a little bit more to not analyze as much. Because mm -hmm. if you've, it, like, I used to say, and I guess I still say, because I'm, I'm a very bad practicer of this philosophy, the most important part of an audition is the second you step out the door. Because if you can step out the door and you treat yourself kindly, mm -hmm. then the next time you go in there, you're going to be way more free, as opposed to if you kill yourself the second, if you not kill yourself, sorry, <laughs> if, you, if you're hard on yourself, right. um, the second you step out. Uh, you know, it's, you're gonna clam yourself up more the next audition you have. So uh, I think there's a process of that acting each time. Like, you know, there is gonna be, you, you, you are gonna be hard on yourself. Certainly I'm always hard on myself. And certainly I, I, I like myself in too many things where I've been hard on myself. <laughs> that it'll, be, it'll be hard to abandon that now without being a masochist or whatever. Do you these. watch yourself? Also, if you wanna have more confidence, check out my 254 Confidence series. It's free. The link to join is in the description below. And we have trouble, we're like, oh my God, I just wanna give up. Did you ever feel like that? Like, all, all the time? All the time. And then you push through it.
for some mad reason, I wanted to kind of go back to square one yeah. and just do it as we'd done it in the Beatles. My call time is at seven, then you back your clock up four hours, and then that's when I get up. Rule number five, give your all. I love the combination of being completely fierce, brave about the character, but at the same time, you're very vulnerable. How did you find that courage? How did you find the, the how did you prepare for that role? Oh um, my, I, I, um, I don't know, maybe it's like too, like simple or something to, to point to the drama school I went to, but that's just like how uh, my whole class um, was taught is uh, just to, uh, I think if you value like the idea of being employed and that that's like an honor it, to be able to like sustain yourself as an artist, period, not just actors. Like I think inherently like you gotta really give it your all. Like I said, I think it's a responsibility, especially we in this movie, um, we're playing real people, so I mean, this was a, uh, a very intimate experience that uh, they went through, so it felt important, like to, like I said, give it, give it everything. Rule number six: Be honest. I think uh, honesty and being as open a book as possible. I think that was the biggest takeaway from uh, the drama high school I went to for me was uh, keep your heart on your sleeve as an actor. That's your instrument. Your Ability to make yourself an open wound is what will communicate to the audience and hopefully serve as a therapeutic device for people experience something, experiencing something similar to the story. Rule number seven, find your creative process. So do you have a method at this point in terms of your acting? Do you have a, a process that you are committed to or are you kind of... You know, I was very fortunate at LaGuardia. We were exposed to a lot of great Q&As at a young age with a bunch of tremendous actors like Al Pacino and Jake Gyllenhaal and and Marissa Tomei, and they would, get, they would get asked that question sometimes about their process, and people would give really succinct answers, but the one I always related to the most was when Edie Falco was asked it, and the great actress, Nurse Jackie in Sopranos, and somebody said, you know, Edie, what's your process, you know, how do you prepare for a role? And she said, you know, I have no idea, and it terrifies me each time, and I just do it. And that's really the feeling I have, too. Rule number eight, be prepared to make sacrifices. I want to talk a little bit about your preparation mm. for Beautiful Boy. Well, Felix, uh, the director, you wanted me to lose weight at the top. How could you lose weight? Um, I know, I <laughs> what know. What did you do? I know, that's what I said to him. I was like, well, I am skinny, <laughs> sir. And, uh, and he was like, but you must be skinnier. And oh, I thought man. like, well, there's no business left <laughs> show. Business. How much did you have to lose? I lost, it was supposed to be 15. Whoa! And then it was 18. Oh my God, no! <laughs> so, what did you just not eat? I just, yeah, it's like very hyper concentrated portions of like Were you nutrients. Miserable? You see Snowpiercer? Yeah. It's like the protein goo. Oh Snowpiercer. no! <laughs> it's like, it's like swollen or something. Yeah, yeah. So what? Um, did you? Did you? Yeah, it's miserable. I don't know. Were you sick? No, I mean, is it hard? Like, yeah, it's hard. Not to be eating. And like you said before, like I feel like influenced by my environment a lot when I act. That's why I really don't like to act on stages. I want to act like with actual tactile, real things. Mm -hmm. And to just be in that state was like, yeah, it was jarring and yeah. jarring for people around me especially with the makeup too, I could come on set and I would see Steve and he would, his face would drop. He, he told me so one day, he gone. said no more. He said like, I'm, he's like, you can't do it you anymore. You got protected. Yeah. Rule number nine, don't set yourself up for failure. What is your dream project? What, like something that at this point in your life, mm -hmm. you're dreaming of playing maybe some favorite, favorite book or? Truthfully, it's, um, it's how I felt about it. Like even my senior year in high school, which was, when I was like starting to work professionally as well, was like, anything good, and that could be musical theater, that could be film, that could be TV, that could be theater, period. Um, um, and to not set oneself up for failure by you know, wanting to do things that, uh, or follow a specific path, but rather like to work with writers, directors, production designers, other actors um, that are inspiring in some way, or whose work I've seen before that I've liked. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have fun. There's a clip of you being a rapper that I understand that we have that, um. Yes! Uh, let's, yes! Let's, let's take a look at the clip of you being a rapper. This makes me so happy. Look at me, it's Timmy T. About to hit him with his E-T-S-T. -E 
Let's do a problem. Let's us see the probability you see me on TV. One zero 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 trillion percent. I'm a statistical wonder, a statistical gem. One in a zillion, about to net a million. Uh, yeah. So the backstory, the backstory behind that, the backstory behind that is that that was a school project that he had to actually turn in for a statistics class. So everyone else wrote out all these big sort of statistics papers and all that, and he turned in this awesome rap, and the teacher only gave him like a D plus. Oh no! Yeah, that, shame on you. Yeah, shame on you. Wherever you are, shame on you. Now I have a special bonus clip from Timothy on how to keep challenging yourself that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Let's go from just watching the video to taking action. Here we go. Question number one, where are you being too hard on yourself? Number two, what does your best creative process look like? And number three, who are three people that you can model their success from? And if you like this video and you're going to take action after watching it, give me a hashtag believe down in the comments as well. I love watching movies. I love seeing plays. Even plays are maybe even a little bit easier for me to read than screenplays. Mm -hmm. But some, when I read some, like a screenplay that really makes sense, it's, it's very, very clear to me. Like Beautiful Boy is something. When I read it, that's the film that I did with Steve Carell that I mm -hmm. guess nobody watching this would have any clue about yet, so I'm speaking without context, but that's the kind of thing when or I read. Or watch it again next year. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but when I read that, there wasn't the experience of calling an agent or a friend saying, wow, I, I read this really great script, I, I can't wait to do it, but rather like, okay, this is the, like, how is this gonna happen? Because right. this is, this can't not happen. And that was kind of the film with Call Me By Your Name and, and, uh, and, and, and ho hopefully projects going forward, but I hope this is the kind of thing I get to watch a couple years from now and I can say, wow, I, I had a disciplined approach to it. And, you know, like the people I admire, like Christian Bale or Gary Oldman or Saoirse or Emma Stone or Jennifer Lawrence or Scarlett Johansson or Mahershala, you know, just picking the right projects and keep challenging yourself. If you want my take on Emma Stone's top 10 rules of success, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Obviously, there were a lot of hopes or, or dreams that I had, and th those things coming true, it, it kind of